So as we continue, we see here other aspects of uh, Google Docs. Here's what I'm going to do. This document that I was working with, I'm going to finish with it. Uh, one odd thing is that I don't see, for example, to close this document under File Menu. I can open and all of that stuff, but I don't really see close. So if you've got my document open, just close its tab, close its window. Uh, I closed my tab and it took me back to my main Google Drive screen here. If you don't have this screen anymore, remember you can go back to it with drive.google.com. But I want to go back to my main Drive screen. And in my case, I've got two documents. One is called My First Google Doc, and one is called Translated Copy of My First Google Doc. So they were both saved here separately when I did that translate. So think about this in terms of this whole gray area. It's a folder. Just like I can have a folder on my flash drive right here with two documents. This is on a drive on my local computer. I've got documents in it. Think about Google Drive the same way. You've got this folder to work with, this main big drive. So if you're back on this screen, you have a bunch of options here on the left, which we'll look at. But uh, if I click New, this is why it might be useful to create folders. Because within folders, you can have organization. So I'm on my main Google Drive screen. Click New and click Folder. What's your name of your folder? I'm going to call this Advanced Google December 2015. Whatever you want. Spaces, capitalization, symbols are fine. I think you can use symbols. Yep. And then create it. So now I get a folder there. It looks different than a document. Documents oftentimes have some sort of preview. Kind of small, but I'm seeing in general these have a preview. I have the folder selected because it's blue. I can click one time on a document and it selects it. So I can click, they select, and as I click these, the icons on the top right change a little bit. Keep an eye on that, they change slightly. But anyway, uh, okay, you click once to select. You've also got, for example, on my first doc, if I click that, and then I've got this info. View, view details, click on that, and then that pops open to give me more information about that particular selected document. Um, I created and shared it on this day today, any activity and details about it. I'm sorry, as a my drive, like what option is this? Because uh, mine is just seen as like just the name and then the last my drive. Oh, okay, your screen is different. Uh, click on this icon right here. Sorry, if this is a Google Drive, this is the drive. And then this is uh, a... Click on this icon right here. It's a button. Now it looks a little bit more like mine. Oh, okay. Does anyone else have a screen that looks a little different? My screen looks like, like this, where it's the gray background and thumbnails. You can switch between different views right here. Uh, a list view, where it's just a list of documents, and then also the thumbnail view, grid view, whichever works for you. But I'm in the grid view, thumbnails. You can switch to the other list view. But I'm in the grid view, and then when I click on a document, it's going to tell me details about it, even a folder. So if I click on the folder to select it, the info there tells me I created it, it's in my main drive, and it's a subfolder of my whole drive. If I wanted to open the folder, I would double-click it, very similar to on my desktop. Drop new files here or use the new button. Okay, good. Well, notice at the top I've got this, which is known as breadcrumbs. I'm in this folder, which is inside of this folder. So if I want to go back to that folder, I can click on it. So I follow the breadcrumbs like Hansel and Gretel. Um, I can get inside of a folder. I can double-click there. Within this folder also, 
I have the ability to click that triangle to do various things similar to this new over here. But when you're in a folder like this, you have these options. And you also, especially if you're using Google Chrome, can right click and you get options like a regular web browser. I'm sorry, like a regular computer window. So if I'm back on Google Drive and I right click a document, I get a context menu that looks like a regular folder. There's remove or delete, download it, make a copy, rename it, preview it, or open it. If I right click on an empty spot of the gray area, that's the same thing as new folder, upload, or create, just like clicking on new over here. And when I'm in a folder, the options at the top pretty much are the same. I can also colorize my folders. I have to be in a folder, so I'm in my advanced Google folder. I clicked on the top triangle, change color. I can color code my folders for more organization at a glance. This is going to be a green folder. And then now notice that has a green folder. And then on the left also here. So this also shows you all your folders at a glance. And if I want to put these two documents inside that folder, you probably know how to do it. As we're seeing that this really represents a regular computer, I can drag and drop. Depends on your web browser. Obviously, using Google Chrome on Google Drive is the best, but it should work pretty well on Firefox <coughs> and Internet Explorer and Safari and such. And so now that folder, if I select it, it says that there's these items inside of it. I move two items into it. And I have these links that can take me directly to it. This is not just information, because I'm able to click and edit all of this. So that info screen on the right side is useful. It might take up a lot of space. You can turn it off or on. But it's useful because then you can quickly do things to a particular document, even descriptions. Um, question. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, color change the advanced Google folder? Because my gray, yours are green. You want to right click it, mm -hmm. and then you have change color. Oh, yeah. <coughs> now, look, I'm going to go with purple. There it is, purple. So managing my drive here is pretty intuitive compared to a computer. <coughs> right click works really well. I can make folders, drag folders, and files, <coughs> rename files, all of that stuff, like a regular computer. Um, there are, there's also the ability for me to star a document. If I right click, I can add a star. The point of star is that then, on the left side, I can go look at all my documents that have been starred. No matter what folder I put them in, they will all be consolidated into this starred view. I can look at the whole drive, individual folders, but everything that's been starred anywhere will show up there. And it's just a matter of right-clicking a file and starring it. I've already started, so I'll remove star, and now it doesn't show up there anymore. I'll start files or folders. So what's the purpose of uh, <coughs> starting the, the documents? Uh, it is a folder? Or? Using it so that you can find things easily later. If I'm working on a document that's in a folder, in another folder, in another folder, I'm going to forget maybe where I have it. So if I add a star to it, it will be accessible to me fastest. So I can quickly come back. It's in my star. I'll edit it right away. I don't know wherever it's saved, but I'm always able to edit it. When I'm done editing it and such, I can turn off the star. It won't be there anymore. It'll go back to its normal folder. It's still in the original folder, always. It's like a bookmark. It's, it's like, so you can find it wherever you left it. So 
it can be useful. I personally don't use them that often. I forget to. But if they are useful to you, that's a good option. Um, shared with me. If you click there, perhaps you will see something listed. Um, if not, that's okay. But under shared with me, that would be if I sent you an email. If I have a document and I shared it to you via sending you an email, it'll show up here. Sometimes what doesn't show up here is simply if you've opened the link. So you guys tell me. If you go to share it with me, does it show you the document that I shared with you earlier? Maybe not. So just following that link that I gave you doesn't seem to attach it to your shared with me. So you need the link again to get back to it. If I instead had gone to share it with you via an email, if I had your email and I sent it to you, then your document, my document, would show up in your shared with me folder. And you also would not be anonymous animals. You would be with your name, because I would know that your name is your email. So because you all got the anonymous email link, you became anonymous little critters. Now, 15 gigabytes, so in my case, if I hover my mouse over this area here, it pops up and it says, okay, my Google Drive isn't really using any space. This stuff is so tiny, it doesn't even count. Gmail is about 38 megabytes of my emails and attachments. Let's think of most of my space is Google Photos. I use Google Photos a lot, and we'll see how we can use it in a moment. It's all part of Google Drive, basically. But, okay, let's say I'm getting close. Let's say I am storing all the photos. I like to take photos. I, I, I am an avid photographer, and I like to take photos, and those add up, especially if you're shooting in raw format, the highest quality. One image could be 20 megabytes, not megapixels, megabytes. A 20 megapixel image still is probably going to be about 3 to 5 megabytes, but I'm talking about high-quality raw images that are 20 megabytes each. And if I, on a regular photo shoot, I shoot 100 of them, that's already 200 megabytes or more there. Well, no, 2 gigabytes there, actually. So it can add up quickly. So 15 gigabytes might seem like a lot of space for some documents. But if I am using them for photos, notice that's taking up more space. Multimedia always takes up more space than documents. So at a certain point, perhaps 15 gigabytes for free is not good enough. I'm going to take a quick look at upgrade storage. Let's see what they say. Well, my plan of 15 gigabytes is my current plan. I can get 100 gigabytes. It costs me $2 per month. $2 per month for one year uh, is $24. So $24 a year for 100 gigabytes. That sounds like a lot also. But as you have a digital life, and nowadays, especially with these newer phones that take better and better photos and video, um, our media takes up much more space. So then we've got one terabyte at $10 a month, so $120 a year for one terabyte of cloud storage, where if your laptop is broken, your files are there. If you get a virus, your files are there. If your house gets blur burglarized, your files are there. If your house burns down, your files are there. $120 a year. And these prices, of course, will, incre will decrease as time goes on and as competition increases. Microsoft has their own version. OneDrive, exactly the same thing. You can create documents, store photos and documents and everything for you know 15 gigabytes as well, for extra price, etc. They're all competing with each other. The grandfather of them all was Dropbox. It's still around, still very popular, but their free version starts you off, to my knowledge, at 2 gigabytes, which nowadays, compared to these guys, seems so tiny. But you can get more space by referring friends, and I've managed to get like 18 gigabytes for free by referring friends over the years. It's harder not to convince people to get Dropbox because everyone's already got either Google Drive, OneDrive, or Dropbox already. And, um, well, if one terabyte isn't enough, 10 terabytes, 20 terabytes, 30 terabytes, $300 a month. So that's for, like, corporations. So, so 299 times 
times 12. So nearly $3,600 a year to save 30, giga, 30 terabytes of data yearly. Storage. For most of us, the 15 will be just fine. If we need more, notice it's a big gap, 15 to 100, but the price is from free to $2. I'm sure at a certain price, at a certain time, this will this will decrease also. I'm going to go back to my drive. I'm going to. You can be inside the Google folder, the advanced Google folder, if you want. I'm going to click New, and we'll take a quick look at Sheets. This created a new sheet. It's untitled. It looks very familiar, like Excel. So if you're going to do Excel work, this is it. So just like an Excel document for fun, I'm going to write here on the first cell, A1, company. I'm going to write here on B, Monday, Tuesday, So like a um, like Excel, you have all of these tricks to save time and effort. Do you know this trick? That if you start writing Monday and Tuesday, for example, and select them both, and then grab this little corner and drag it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it fills it in for you. So this is stuff that you learn in an, in an, in an office class. Uh, you learn the tricks of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc., which apply basically also to Google Drive. But anyway, just for fun here, okay, the days of the week, company, I want to write Apple, Microsoft, Google. What I'm writing here is the stock price. We can look it up, of course. Uh, but let's say on Monday, Apple stock price was $110, on Tuesday it was $112, on Wednesday it was $109, etc., etc. Today's Wednesday, Microsoft, it was $55 Monday, $59 Tuesday, $62 Wednesday, and Google, it was $700, $705, and 711 Just making these up but that's pretty close to what they are in real life. So it's a spreadsheet. I can add data here. I can then select the data, insert chart. I've got all of these types of chart types. Just so I'm going to select whatever and insert. There we go. So now I've got a chart right here. In addition to my data, I've got a nice chart, and that shows what the stock price of Apple was doing in these three days, what it was doing for Microsoft, what it was doing for Google. So that's just basic Excel stuff. I selected all of my all of my data, dragged it like that, insert chart. That's what one of the things that spreadsheets are very good at to take boring numbers and make them a little bit more readable. I've never had to myself save. I've never had to click on any save button. It automatically saves. It's saved technically as untitled spreadsheet. Well, I'm going to change that to company stocks. I have the same thing, the same ability here that I had with the word processor document. I have file revision history, so how I've edited it. I've seen that. And I have the share button. So here's another document that I can share with people directly so through email, as a shareable link to Twitter, Facebook, etc. We've already seen that. And 
and uh, most of us have had some experience with a spreadsheet software. Here's some new things we can look at. I've got that document at the top left. There's this icon, Sheets Home. We're currently working on a particular spreadsheet. Earlier we were working on a particular word, uh, word processor doc. But at the top left you have this icon, which might not be an obvious icon. But you click on that. I think if you click on it the first time it pops up with some sort of like tour or something. Uh, we can just close that. But here then, I've got this main document area, and I can select create a brand new empty spreadsheet, create a to-do list, an annual budget, a monthly budget, a calendar, and I have more. So if I simply select 2016 calendar, it automatically creates a spreadsheet that's all filled out for me. This is what this is what next year will look like. I'm going to take a quick browse. Are there any are there any Friday the 13th next year? Yes, May has a Friday the 13th, so I can mark that in red. Now the funny thing is that obviously Friday the 13th is not bad luck in all cultures, um, but it's funny just to look at it here. So May, nothing else. And it's a spreadsheet, it's a, it's next month's, next year's layout. So at least one good superstition, at least the, the first day of the year, January, will start on a Friday with a weekend. That's good. Yes. So we have various various templates that we can start with, even on the spreadsheets. Um, And so that was also available in um, in 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 the doc. We didn't look at it, but we could do that as well. We can share this calendar because then, if we share it with people, what you could do is you can right-click a calendar and insert a note or a comment. So anyone that adds a comment here, such as "My birthday." It's not my real birthday, but I've added a I've added a a comment there, a note. And if I share this with more people, everyone can add content to it. It's not exactly like their classic kind of collaborative calendar. This is just one use for it, but um, that's an idea. So how do you um, like? Change the color of the background. Of the, the way that it works is you select one of the cells because they're all really cells, and then at the top you've got color of text and color of the background. Oh, the So here's what we'll do now. On your own, try this. Close this ex close this spreadsheet document and now try creating a, a a presentation document on your own. See how that works. I'll get you started. Close this file, go back to new, and go check out what Google Slides is about. I'll look at it with you in a moment, but you check it out for a moment. We've got docs, word processor, sheets, spreadsheet, slides presentation, like PowerPoint. Go we'll check out a Google slide for a moment, see if you can find the templates, and then we'll check it out together.
All right, so if I create a brand new Google slide, it's the basic, um, the basic document, like a presentation. I have these various slides. This is my first slide, such as there's a presentation here that I'm going to call how to use HTML5 subtitle a series on learning the modern way so I've got my first slide if you've never used PowerPoint before this is a presentation software if you have used PowerPoint this should be familiar so what happens with it is that you've got these various slides it's like a page at a time to show on the left side it shows I have one slide, I wrote some text, and at the top left then I add a new slide. I click the little plus sign and I have a brand new slide. So now I'm going to add here step one. Use a code editor like Notepad++. Write your doc tie. I'm just filling in some stuff, you don't have to do this. But I'm showing that then I can add different slides. Okay, slide two, or slide three, which is step two. Publish it. So I've got these three slides. One, two, three. I do have some themes on the right side that I can apply. I've got this very basic black and white design. It might be too basic. I can easily select a design simple dark and now they're all like this I can select beach day and now it looks like that might be a little too jovial for my topic that font looks a little childish for the seriousness of my presentation but I have uh, other ones right here perhaps slate it's a little nicer maybe and then um, You can further play with it. And then on the top right corner, I have the present button. I click on that. It'll go full screen like a real presentation. I can go to next slide, previous slide. When it's all done, press escape. So again, I uh, don't have really time to get into how to use all of this. This is very familiar if you use the other software, Microsoft Office and such. But on the top there you have present. And just like the Excel, uh, just like the spreadsheet document, I can go back to the main, to the home. I can go back to slide home, and I get a variety of templates. If I select slide home, look at that! I can get a pitch presentation, photo album, portfolio, more. Take a look at that for a moment. Go to that screen and see about. Um, creating different kinds of documents based on templates.
That one was the one called Pitch. I really um, like that one because if I select Pitch right away, it has a variety of, of built-in uh, of built-in screens. I fill in my company name. This is what our mission is, and all of these things that are filled in really nice. No, I don't think I've used it. Is it related to PowerPoint, maybe? Uh, that you can do presentations? I think it's a different company, but, uh, but you know, really same thing. Prezi? That is a limitation uh, that I've noticed on some things that, you know, like that, how they're showing you, zoom into the details. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had a presentation last week here at the college to teach mm -hmm. us how to use a new computer system. Mm -hmm. And the presenter was really nice and knowledgeable, but when he was showing his slides up here, the text was so tiny and yes. the people in the back of the room couldn't see it and he could not zoom in at all. Mm -hmm. Notice when I teach the class, I have the ability to zoom in, but I'm not using a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. I'm using my live presentation yes. here. So it looks like Prezi lets you zoom in easily. That's really useful. I know that uh, Microsoft has a new software, like it's like PowerPoint 2.0. It's called Sway, S W A Y, and it's their new sort of presentation. I haven't really used it at all to know what's so good about it, but perhaps this is because they saw the competition of Google Drive and Prezi, and then they have their new Sway. So that you can get that as part of Office as well for free. Okay, so um, we've been using Google Drive in the context of we've got a web browser, we logged into our account, and we've got it set up. Um, logging in. The other way to use Google Drive is what you would call offline. We've got the online and we've got the offline. Online is I have to go to my web browser. I log in and I see my documents. I need to have an online connection. Offline is that I can install the Google Drive software directly to my computer, on my laptop, on my phone, on my desktop. And what will happen is I will have a brand new folder, we'll see in a moment, we'll have a brand new special folder on our computer called Google Drive. It'll behave like a regular folder in Windows or the Mac, but what's so special about it is anything you save into that special Google Drive folder, let's just pretend this folder is it right here, Google Drive, it'll have its own icon. But we've got our own Google Drive folder on our computer, and whatever we save into that folder will automatically in the background save itself to my Google Drive in the cloud. So if I save any documents into this Google Drive folder here, when I go visit my account on the web, it'll be there automatically. 
in the background, it's just going to be automatically synchronized. So it's not technically completely offline, but the point is that I don't have to be on their website. I'm in my own folder on my own computer saving stuff. And if I install that Google Drive software to my computer and my laptop and my phone, wherever I save anything on any computer, they all synchronize. So this is how I get a photo that I took from my Canon camera. I fix it in Photoshop. I put it in Drive, and then it automatically shows up on my phone. And then I can post it through my phone, instead of emailing it and going through that kind of hassle. Well, the way you do that is right here, get Drive for PC. You're going to see a little icon there. You don't have to go through the whole process, but I'll check it out for a moment. I'm going to click Get Drive for PC, get Drive everywhere. Install Drive on your smartphone, tablet, and computer for free cloud storage that lets you keep your files safe and easy to reach from anywhere. So if I click Download Drive, it says Mac, PC, Android, iPhone. Uh, I'm just going to go through the process. You don't need to, but I'll go with Mac and PC. Accept and install. It's downloading this software, Google Drive Sync. It will install the software. It will ask me to log in with my credentials. Once I've logged in, I can, I'll have then a special folder. I have Google Slides, Google Docs, Google Sheets, installation complete. So whatever I do here, now also I've got a brand new icon on the corner here. On the corner, Google Drive, I'm not signed in. Once I've signed in, it will synchronize into that icon, into that folder, with what I've got on my online account. I'm not going to go through the whole process because I don't want it to synchronize on this public co computer. But at home, I would do this, and I would log in with my, email, my, my Gmail and all of that, and it would verify me, and then what would happen is now I would have a brand new icon that I can click so that I can then open this special folder where I can drag files into it, drag files out of it, create files, edit files here, and then we'll automatically in the background save. This icon will be showing here synchronized, or currently synchronized, or error, or whatever. And then when I do something online, let's say vice versa, let's say I'm not at my home computer, I'm at the school's computer, but I'm logged into my Google Drive here, I make changes to these documents, I go home to my computer, and then I open the Google Drive folder, and then all changes that I made will show up there automatically on my Google Drive folder at home, or laptop, or tablet, or phone. And what's useful about putting it on your on your phone or tablet or desktop and such is that you can also activate some extra features such as auto photo save. So if I've got my cell phone and I've got Google Drive on my phone <coughs> and I activate the ability to auto-save photos. Whenever I take a photo on my phone, it will then automatically get saved to my Google Drive. It will create a copy onto my Google Drive, and so if something happens to my phone, I drop it in a lake, the photos got saved to my drive, my online 15 gigabytes of storage. Sorry about that, I logged out. So if I've got Google Drive for my phone, I take photos on it and it automatically uploads. Now obviously there, if I've got a limited data plan, 
when I'm taking all these high-quality photos, they're gonna use, it's going to use up my data. If I've got unlimited data, it's not as big of an issue. Also, however, if I don't have good reception, so usually in this room I've got terrible reception unless I'm on Wi-Fi. And so I'm taking photos, writing documents, whatever, they automatically then get uploaded to my to my um, to my drive. That's why mine says I've got 181 megabytes of photos. Because whenever I make I shoot these photos and they get uploaded, it takes up that space. So that's the online and the offline aspects of Google Drive. Online is simply that I'm going to their website and logging in. I have to have the web browser. Offline is that I have to install the software, and then I'll have the software on my computer where I can work with it without needing to be online at that moment. Let's say I'm working on my document and I uh, don't have internet access. Let's say I'm out in a park and, I, and I've got my laptop instead of enjoying the, and enjoying the park. I'm working on my laptop and I save my document. It's saved on my computer. As soon as I get to Wi-Fi, it'll synchronize without me paying attention and then my files will be saved and they will be safe upon my Google Drive. And so this is, this is going to be the future because Chromebooks, if you haven't heard of those, Chromebooks are these laptops made by Google that are relatively, relatively low quality in that they don't have the, the, the highest processor or the best RAM. And actually they have pretty small hard drives because they have very tight integration with Google services. Why would you need a hard drive if you've just got your Google Drive? Um, you won't need too much processing power on a Chromebook because you've got everything that you're doing online somehow. On a website, you can play games on websites, you can watch videos on websites, you can even make videos on websites. So something like a Chromebook by Google is very connected to the cloud, so the hardware itself doesn't need to be that powerful. The downside, of course, is some things do require a powerful laptop, like Photoshop and hardcore video editing and all of that. And the downside also is that you need an internet connection to fully realize the abilities sometimes. But that's the future of things, perhaps. You have your offline storage, which could be useful. It's handy, but it has has dangers. And you can have the cloud drive, which is always there, always handy, but that has issues at times as well. As well. We're going to take one more break, and when we come back we're going to look at one more aspect of Google Drive, one that is uncommon to most people, but if you learn about this you might find that it's very useful for you, and that's Google Forms. So uh, it's 2.30. Let's take a break until 2.40. When we come back, we'll look at Google Forms.